So I got the bus and I never thought I'd actually be living in it. And I started camping in it like all the time. And I wasn't even staying at my apartment that I was paying for. I was like, man, if I'm literally living in this thing more than I'm living in my apartment, I'm just gonna move into it. So that kind of started and five years later, I'm still in the bus. It's kind of my workstation. It's it's kind of, you know, the, the trip mobile, go down to Baja, go up north, go surfing, go snowboarding, um, go stuff my bike inside and go on moto trips. It's kind of a dream, honestly. And uh, it's just crazy that I can actually, I, sometimes I just kind of step back, I'm like, man, I can't believe I can actually do this and like kind of call this home and be saving a lot of money, but just be stoked and be able to live anywhere. I mean, like right now, this is, this is the backyard. We're probably gonna go out and surf in a little. How's it going? I'm James Barkman. This is my 1976 VW bus. Little customized, a little Mad Maxed. <laughs> but uh, I'm a photographer, I'm a climber, I'm a surfer. I do a lot of different things, but uh, right now I'll just kind of show you guys my bus and what I've done to it and what it looks like. Let's pick it up. So this is my living room, also the downstairs. <laughs> For the most part, I haven't done a lot of interior customization obviously there's a high top um, this originally was a Westie so there was a pop top but it's kind of crazy how what they made back in the 70s I'm still using in 2020 it kind of trips me out but uh, this is kind of storage here's an ice box uh, I have a fridge this is books and whatnot there's a closet really big like I kind of have a workspace here as well as a living space as a photographer I have um, I kind of do a lot of editing and whatnot so this is kind of like my little editing bay it's pretty simple I have power um, and I can kind of crank in here as much as I need though so yeah so a big part of why I'm in this bus and and why I've been semi nomadic is because um, it enables me to do kind of these other trips and, and other adventures. So from 2017 to the end of 2018, I did a big motorcycle trip from the top of Alaska to the bottom of Argentina. And it was kind of like a motorcycle slash climbing expedition. I did it with two other buddies. So pretty much from top of North America to the bottom of South America, we climbed a lot of high alpine, high elevation stuff. This is a pretty crazy trip, but it's it's kind of like for me the van and you know whether I'm living in a van, whether I'm living a bike, whether I'm living on a boat, or living wherever I'm living. To me, it's not an end in itself; it's a means to an end. Like this bus enables me to surf and climb and ride dirt bikes and and um, and like you know do other trips. So that's that's kind of like um, kind of the reason I've been in it all these years. Um, I guess. Um, how I've kind of gotten into photo stuff or how I'm supporting all this is I've been a photographer for about five years and I do a lot of projects for brands and companies in the outdoor moto space. Um, I'm a freelance so it's kind of all across the board sometimes and uh, I can kind of do it wherever and work remotely and this definitely enables me to be able to do that. So out here we have a pretty rad Go Westy setup. This is relatively new and it's changing my life already. <laughs> so this is kind of the storage box. I've been kind of keeping my moto gear in it and you can kind of keep whatever, but my tools are inside. Um, and this has been super nice just for all my moto gear. Obviously there's storage in the, uh, in the spare wheel and then the tray can be used for, like, you know, a stove when you're out camping and mostly I use it for wood. So for a while, I was kind of trying to keep my van as classic and, and like OG as possible. 
but there kind of comes a point when you live in it where you just need accessories and you just need extra space. So I've kind of crossed the threshold of like staying original and I've just gone full Mad Max. <laughs> so hopefully I, I still, there's a lot of things I want to do yet, but I want to get a lift, I want to get a winch, I want to do a lot more stuff like that. But this is, uh, this is kind of the beginning of the Mad Max of James's bus. So here's the back. One of the things I got recently and I'm super stoked on is the uh, Venture Libre Bravo leather tool kit. So I still have a ton of tools inside in like a toolbox with parts and whatnot, but this is pretty much everything you need. I mean, literally to rebuild the motor, I think I could use all these tools right here, which is insane. So I'm pretty stoked on that. Um, just like wetsuits, surf stuff. And then for the engine, a lot of people always ask me about this. I haven't done the Subaru swap. I probably never will. <laughs> I'm kind of old school when it comes to air-cooled motors. My bike right here is air-cooled. Almost everything I've ever owned uh, vehicle-wise has been air-cooled. So I've kind of just committed to the air-cooled program. But I killed the fuel injection system and I put a single Weber in. It's not as powerful as it would be with, you know, dual carbs and eventually I want to do a dual carb setup. But right now it's it's kind of crazy. I can do 65 all day with this, with this carb. It's super simple. Like, 80% less the headache is fuel injection. So, stoked on that setup. I have an auxiliary battery for power. Um, and then I have a solar hookup when I'm kind of camping like in Baja or something and uh, post it up for a while. I can hook up the solar. So that's that. Another part of this swing away system that I'm super stoked on is the whole bumper setup. So this is kind of, it's it's designed to be, to look pretty classic. Like if I was just running this bumper without the swing, swing ways, you wouldn't even know that it's not a stock bumper, you know, unless you looked really closely. It has the hitch so you can still tow stuff. Um, that's pretty rad. And honestly, it just, it looks like a, like a stock bumper. So I'm pretty stoked on that. And there's always the option just to run that. This is a CB, another, another part of the Mad Max <laughs> process. So I got a CB radio. Can't ever get too lost, I guess, when you have a CB. Yeah. And I uh, made this custom rack with a friend for the high top. So I've kind of dubbed the bus the Yellow Submarine. It's following <laughs> a Yellow Submarine aesthetic. So you have like, the if you look at the Beatles Yellow Submarine, it's like yellow, orange, and white. All I need is uh, a uh, periscope which I'm working on so <laughs> hopefully I'll actually have a real periscope with like binoculars so you can check the waves from inside so I'm kind of done things a little differently with my bus eventually I want to get a lift kit but for now um, these 15 steelies with grabbers work super great I mean it's kind of amazing how deep you can get in a bus and not get stuck with this setup so go Westy hooked up this setup super grateful for. One of the things that seriously changed in my life is the Fox Shocks. I go Westy for uh, for the bay window. It's it's pretty rad how go Westy's kind of making a move towards, you know, the whole bus scene. And um, there's a lot more people kind of sending in their buses now than there used to be. So with these shocks, it's actually insane. I'm excited to make some more Baja trips, kind of get off road more and, and put them to the test. But already with what I've done, it's honestly blown my mind. I didn't know you could have a ride that good with a bus, <laughs> to be honest. So with the whole 15 kind of AT um, tires and, and Fox shock setup, I'm kind of ready to go anywhere, to be honest. Proudly air cold. <laughs> Take that all you Subaru sellouts. <laughs> Don't zoom up on my rust and bondo. This bondo was here when I got the bus, so I actually didn't put it on myself. Nothing to see here. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a bus is it's a labor of love. You know, it's it's not polished, it's not clean. I mean, especially this bus, it's a little <laughs> rusty, <laughs> a little rugged. <laughs> But I love it, I love, I mean, it's kind of cliche, but like the whole wabi-sabi concept is really profound and beautiful to me. And, and that's kind of my whole life, I just love vintage things. And like, I'd rather have some crusty jacket that I wear my whole life and get to my kids than 
have a bunch of, you know, jackets that I don't need or wear. It's, it's like the whole philosophy of the bus and like keeping it on the road. And I feel like it speaks to a lot of life. And, yeah. and I know it has for me. And I feel like it just kind of teaches you to slow down and appreciate things. And, and like when you, when you build, like I've, man, this is like the fourth motor, fifth motor I've had in here. <laughs> When you when you build something with your own two hands, and it's you, you're driving it down the road, there's just it's just so much more special, you mm -hmm. know. It's like you put the work into it, and like anything that you invest in and put your time into, it just has a greater reward. So that's kind of every every day I drive this, I'm like, man, it's not just something I bought and I'm like driving. It's like I've I've put the work into it, and it's it's just so special. more than a bus to me it's it's kind of it's my home and it's it's something that's connected me with this huge community I mean so many friends and like really close friendships I have now were made because of you know the bus and van and like camping whatever community so it's a it's a special rig